My name is Jeff Engelman. I am the Director of Thoracic Oncology and Molecular Therapeutics at the Cancer Center. My research focuses on developing new therapeutics for patients with cancer. I'm Diane Legg and I am a ten and a half year stage four lung cancer survivor. When I was first diagnosed with lung cancer, I think one of the things that was shocking to me was really the lack of resources that was going into specifically lung cancer research. In 2003, a lot of the training as a thoracic oncologist, as a lung cancer specialist, was how to give patients bad news. About four or five years ago, a technician in the lab named Elizabeth Lockerman worked very hard at taking biopsies obtained from the clinic and seeing if she could grow them in the lab, and it never worked. <laughs> But she was incredible, uh, and she really stuck to it. And over a couple of years, she started getting this to work routinely. So then we started hiring more people to work with her. It started being just one or two people working on this. It was a very abstract idea that just based on mistakes that we made and discovering new things along the way that we managed to put all of these together. Getting to see like the progression of how this whole process has started and like where it's at now and we're making a difference in like different people's lives. We're getting these biopsies from patients who have a background and I feel really connected to the patients so I feel like it means a lot to me that we're able to do this. One of the challenges of um, experimenting with lung cancer, particularly in humans, is to actually get those cells to grow in culture and stay alive. It's just been just recently in the past year or so that we've been able to be successful at that. If you lived in some make-believe land, that you could treat the patient with hundreds of different drugs and pick the one that works best and go forward. And you can't do that in the clinic. But what we can do is take the patient's cancer and say, we're basically going to do the clinical trial on a piece of your cancer. What happens right now in the clinic is when a patient gets a biopsy, we have a courier service. The courier takes the biopsy, transports it here. The biopsy is then taken upstairs to the cell line team. Typically when we receive a biopsy from a patient, it's, it's very small. It's, you know, not this big, but it's like, Itty, itty bitty and so whatever we receive we're really really lucky to get it. From there we usually do like enzymatic digestion of the tissue just to try and get it as single cell as you can. And then after the digestion it's ready for plating. Once it's plated then we hold on to that plate in the cells and grow them until we hopefully have a line. We then take those cancer cells and in collaboration with Cyril Benes who runs the Center for Molecular Therapeutics. We put those cells through high-throughput drug screens. We are in the high-throughput screening room of the Center for Molecular Therapeutics. This is where we take cancer cells that are coming from the tumors and we screen them for their response to a lot of different anti-cancer drugs. So we try to figure out which of the cancers will respond to which drug. Where you would normally test one drug over many different patients, perhaps hundreds of patients, which would take years We've flipped that upside down where now we uh, actually test the tumor cells, a single individual, in a dish with 1,500 different novel compounds, and we're able to see which one of those actually works for that patient. So in this plate, you have 1,536 wells, and in each of these wells, we add different drugs and different concentration of that drug to test the response of the cancer cells. That's a paradigm that has not existed, and so that we think this could be a eureka moment. I think working in a group is, is extremely important. That's where the magic comes, making all these group of people work together. It's interesting to look at each other's samples to learn from you know, what each sample looks like. Not every sample is going to look identical. You can have tumors grow in the patients so quickly, but the moment you transfer it over to plastic, uh, the whole equation changes. As much as it has evolved so far, there's of course always room for growth and learning more. We are learning new things every day. Most of the time, this is not a regular nine to five job. There, are, I mean, we're here all day until the sample is processed. This is tissue from those patients, and they're relying on this team to make cells from these biopsies so we can study them. Mass General is very lucky uh, to have this group of young investigators working with us to accomplish this goal. 
About eight weeks ago, I had a biopsy. Not, not always, even though if you have a biopsy, will cancer, these cancer cell lines grow. So, you know, there was no guarantee that mine were gonna grow. So today we were here at the lab and we actually were able to see my cancer cells. It was really incredible. It's a pretty special time when uh, young researchers come to a lab and actually visit with someone who's a stage four cancer survivor. They're looking at and cultivating their own cancer cells and seeing that here is the success of their experimentation where that survivor is right in front of them. That's uh, pretty special. I actually was lucky enough one day a patient themselves actually had come for a tour and they got to see my, their cells on a plate that I was growing. What I was doing may not have been in the clinic or like directly with that patient, but I was still getting to see that patient and like see the effect I'm having on them. Yeah, wow. That's very cool. Thank you. When I finished my first cell line, because that was the first time I thought to myself kind of like, I can do this, like I can help make a difference. Like I've taken the sample from the very beginning. It really stuck with me, like I, I can do this, I can help. <laughs> The work that I've done here for the Endomen Lab to provide the means for other researchers to do their work. It's just it's like a validation of this can be done, it takes time, and it will, be, it will serve for people in the future. It's just that we have to keep going. Anytime anyone is diagnosed with cancer, I mean, it's extremely scary. But I think today there is so much more hope. It's really because, again, of the dedication of the people here at MGH and, and the doctors and the scientists. I'm very proud of them. And they're doing such an outstanding job. And without them, this whole effort would not be possible. I'm really so indebted to them for the incredible work that they've been doing for us, with us, not for us, with us.